And joining us right now from somewhere around the world is Mike from around the world. Mike, how you doing tonight? God bless you, Pastor Paul. Doing well. Praise God. You're coming in loud, sounding wonderful. Brock, you got, this, you got this mellowed out just right? Let's do it. Mike, great to have you tonight. Uh, it's, great to be here. Okay, Mike, it was in 2014 that you introduced us to the five waves of energy. And I just read an article tonight that said that we were hit with one a year, about a year ago. It was December of 2021, a big one. I think we talked about it a time or two in, over the last year. But they're yeah. bringing it back up again. This article just came back out again in which they're really uh, talking to us about the, the earth hit by this intense blast of energy that's unlike any we've seen before and more on the way. Mike, are they bringing this up because of what's going to happen in 2023? Are they revisiting this again? Well, they understand that conditions are going to become quite uh, grave. And so even even back then, Pastor Paul, I think we... Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we called that date out. You did. But they're just, they're just not getting to it. And um, but these waves are, you know, these are the, that was a tiny one. That that was not. They they call it significant. No, not really, because there was no great reaction on the Earth, and it was far below the readings of the one on August 17th. The next ones that are bound that, that are coming in, you're looking at levels that will uh, totally can make. You know, explosive chemicals inert uh, actually change, you know, they can actually change chemistry on the earth. And we're going to have a bad problem with our atmosphere. So conditions that we are living in right now are going to begin to degrade almost at uh, some type of an exponential rate. So you're saying that, and we had this happen when we started seeing all those explosions, those chemical plants and 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 uh, different kinds of chemicals, and all of a sudden plants were just blowing up everywhere. And I covered these. That's you right. said it was going to happen, and it did. Are you saying we're going to be seeing that again, even alarmingly worse? Yeah, much worse. Uh, last time there was enough momentum behind some of these charged particles, and not only uh, penetrate the magnetosphere, but also to impact the surface of the Earth and below. These coming through will utterly obliterate um, the magnetosphere. Is not going to be of any consequence to these inbound particles. And they will absolutely travel at probably, I would say probably twice the speed uh, as those particles that uh, purged their way into us in August 17th that time. So we're looking at some very volatile times. Fires are going to become quite common. So people all get ready for fires in every single condition uh, that goes along with fires. So we're going to be seeing chemical reactions, in other words, chemical plants uh, exploding because the chemicals that are sending in the, these plants that make different resins and make different um, pesticides or make different catalysts for gasoline and different, different petroleums, we're going to be seeing these things just start reacting and exploding everywhere. But you're saying there's also going to be other ramifications from this yeah the last one was quite slight now think of it this way if 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 anybody knew about some of the consequences of these larger inbound uh, shock waves that will come into us these particle shock waves wouldn't they try to eliminate where gasoline is you know because gasoline is a very volatile chemical right it, right. it's not going to blow very up by itself yeah right but all you have to do is introduce uh, an influx of radiation to gasoline, and it does ignite. Not only does it ignite, it causes a secondary reaction due to that explosive potential. And so there are many uh, different mechanisms that take place in the explosion of gasoline when, when exposed to highly charged particles at very high speeds. So if they knew this was coming, wouldn't they try to, to limit gasoline and its, you know, it's a, it's availability everywhere to, to avoid fires all over the place. I know I certainly would. I would come up with something to get people not to have a lot of gasoline where they are. So I really saying, would. You're saying, Mike, that this whole GOP 15 and the GOP 27 and this climate, uh, climate uh, initiative and blaming it on the, the carbon footprint and all that to save the planet is really not about carbon footprint but it's really about what's coming the incoming waves of energy from this binary system that really 
they got to figure out ways to limit the production of gasoline and certain chemicals because of the 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 the, the radiation levels are going to be igniting things. And they can't yeah, tell you, us that. And that's what you're saying. They can't tell us that. You would want a mechanism in place where you could truly govern uh, because also you're going to have a breakdown of government, right? Uh, when these things begin to happen. So wouldn't you limit supplies in, in locations where potential, uh, for example, militias could form that are very powerful? Wouldn't you limit supplies in those areas? Wouldn't you start that right now so that when these things do take place, you wouldn't have to worry about great opposition from some, you know, group that's, that's, that's well, you know, well stocked. And so limiting, uh, it, it just, you know, Call it a conspiracy, if you like, everybody out there. But it, it's, it seems that this weather chaos, this climate change, climate issues in the hearts of so many, they are the, the same plans they're making for climate change would be the same plans you make for some catastrophic change upon the earth caused by some external body or some external event that would... Uh, uh, soon expose itself to the earth. So those same preparations you would also make for incoming asteroids. Those same preparations you would make for uh, a large gaseous cloud or meteor storm. You'd make those same preparations because you would not want in the aftermath um, a new type government rise up that would take over the one that they're trying to sustain. So it sounds like, so in other words, they had to, they couldn't come out and just say, look guys, we're going to get hit with a bunch of incoming asteroids. We're going to get we're going to get inundated with a ton of radiation. We're going to have incredible magma moving and the core of the Earth heating and the and there's going to be earthquakes and vol- volcanism like you won't believe. And you're going to have chemicals exploding and plants and things. Can't come out and say that because our our question would be, well, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to stop it? You can't say that. So instead, you say, you know something, the planet's dying. We're, we're, we've got too much carbon. We've got to cut way back. We've got to change our ways if we're going to save the planet. And, and, and it's a whole lot less threatening approach than, That's right. than what's, what's really happening. That's right. And people are fully compliant because now they have a reason behind some of the things they see. And they say, oh, no, it's good. Remember when I told you that people would beg to go to a, one of these facilities? And they were talking about at the time saying, I would never go to one of those facilities. Well, that's wrong. People are going to beg to get to these facilities. They're actually going to lock people in because they're psychologically changing everything. People, we, there are a lot of people out there. They have a flaw and they have to be careful who they believe. Now, in my life, it's very simple. I believe Christ. I do not believe the world nor the rhetoric of the world. And so when they start, you know, giving out this propaganda on television, I'm not swayed at all because I do not uh, stop faith in that. All my faith is in Christ. Amen. And so when they start talking about these people, these situations and everything else, and because the Lord said the world can't have the truth, why in the world would I act on any truth? that the world gives when God said they cannot have the truth. If, if they don't have the truth, right, why would I act on it? And so sometimes, as Christians, a lot of Christians have to be careful what they're walking by. We're going to walk by the Spirit, not by the news, you know, not by this stuff. So no. they, they do this. So when, when they do this, past all, people believe the propaganda. And then they begin to defend the propaganda they hear. So they essentially have people at war with one another over propaganda, right? Yeah, over propaganda. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's highly effective. They've always been doing this. We are about to endure some very bad fires. We're going to have atmospheric penetration like we have never seen before. What is it's it? Gonna Atmos- be, it's are, are just going to be bad. Penetration from incoming meteor meteor a meteor gas? storm. That'll yeah. be from an actual meteor storm. That'll be when the sky really turns black. That'll be when distress is going to start. It, it'll just begin to take hold. And believe me, uh, th- there are going to be land-based operations that will coincide with this. E- even right now, a lot of people know about the Russia-Ukrainian war, but are they watching North Korea and Iran? 
They I might want to watch them very closely because all this time uh, during this war, they have been bolstering their ground-based launch, attack, and support systems. And now Iran and North Korea can absolutely hand off launch capabilities to each other concerning ICBMs. So Iran can take over absolute control of any launch coming from North Korea and vice versa. They can also talk and, and, and change trajectories of these ICBMs in the air because these are not normal ICBMs like the Atlas-based uh, uh, system or the Russian-made system. No, 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 no. These are, these are guided systems, which means they can absolutely change their trajectory in the air, dodging things, do whatever they have to do. So now you have to introduce hypersonics into this. Iran has hypersonic propulsion systems right now. Hyper, do you know what that means? Iran will not hesitate to launch nuclear weapons at the U.S. And I'll tell you right now, as soon as they have hypersonic capability, as soon as they have control of their warheads on hypersonics, they will launch at the USA, they will hit targets in the USA, and then they'll proceed to do what they have to do in the Middle East. But they're going to get rid of us first. As soon as they get it, they're going to launch. If they got it tonight, they're going to launch. I'm just telling you right now that that's a, that there's there's just no way around that. People are not prepared for that. They're not talking about Iran in the news or anything else. So, you know, so you're this, saying um, you're saying North Korea, if they get a hypersonic IBM missile, they will launch. They're going to give it to Iran. OK, and Iran's going to launch it. Toward but up. Iran already has hypersonic propulsion capabilities. Right, right. They're perfecting the actual carrier for that. Right. That'll be done in another two weeks. And, but they have to be able to put a warhead on that hypersonic right. uh, uh, missile system, a delivery system. Once they do that, pass balls all she wrote, they will launch the moment they get it right. Well, now, let me ask you a question. They will launch. Is it because they don't fear us of reprisal? I mean, or they don't think we have the or do we have the capability? They don't care. They don't they don't care what the reprisal is. They have it said in their hearts to make America burn. OK, in their faith, in our faith. Right. We have a faith far different than anybody else's in right. their faith. The only way they can please the God they worship is to set America on fire. It must be on fire. It must be painful. It must be gruesome. And there's there's no way around that. Folks, Mike around the world join us tonight. This is some very candid discussion and it's very important. And and so we've got this a, a planet, our planet, being inundated and you use the word radiation. You said that when radiation levels get so high even gasoline will ignite. Uh, I take it that these waves of energy, Mike, are bringing strong levels of radiation. And is that going to happen in 2023? Is that part of these 17 dates that are going to take place? Are oh, we going we're going to have some. This? You're, we're going to have some massive changes in 2023 that are highly unexpected. And by the way, uh, just like galactic cosmic rays, that's radiation. Radiation is essentially. Uh, uh, highly active particles, right? Uh, most of them are radioactive to the point where they can damage us. Um, radiation emissions are dangerous because what that radiation emits will knock the nucleus out of our cells. And when that happens, our cells collapse, they decay. So we can't, you know, life can't be sustained that way. So imagine that same process uh, being hurled toward the earth, exposing everything to it. Uh, so everybody's going to have a degree of, even right now, people are walking around with uh, symptom, radiation symptoms, radiation exposure symptoms, and they don't understand why. These things are building up uh, far beyond anybody's projections. And so these waves coming in with these highly charged particles will absolutely knock the nuclei out of the molecular structure of gasoline, of, of some of these uh, non-volatile substances. They separate only volatile when they put them together. There's going to be, uh, you know, that's a actual chemical change that will take place, more explosions. But also, we're going to be inundated with debris, lots of debris. Is that going to happen it's, in 20? Are we going to see some of this in 2023, Mike? Yeah, we're going to start seeing that uh, right away. We're going to start seeing that right away. We're already seeing a little that, bit that's of that. Not, that's not a future projection. That's a buildup to a crescendo that, I'll, I'll tell you what, it's going to get so bad, Pastor Paul, that you're going to have a lot of people that will only contemplate suicide. Because of the incoming debris. That's, because so it's so bad, gonna it's going to become so fires, We're going to see a lot of fires. 
So you're anticipating in 2023. I mean, we're already seeing just in the last, Mike, the last two months, there's been so many much more uh, meteors caught on camera. And and there, people are catching them everywhere on security cameras and everything. And, like, the media is just kind of, like, not even bringing it up. I mean, but we can find it all over the Internet, everywhere, okay? And the local news sometimes covered if it's over Pittsburgh or something. But it, it's being quieted down. It's being hushed in a corner. They can't hide it forever, though. Is it really going to – are we going to see a, a lot more in 2020? Yes, yes. And more fires yeah, more, breaking more. out? That's right. Well, actually, we can understand what a meteor storm is. Well, well, you know what happened before? It happened before. This earth was in darkness for 12 years. Come to find out it was in darkness for 12 years. And that was after Christ um, was was resurrected and sat at the right hand of the Father. And then it happened following that the earth was in darkness for five years. All vegetation, the light, the uh, vegetation was stumped. Things happen and it's all coming back again. But this time it's going to be much worse. Much worse. So it's not like the earth never went through this because a lot of people will, they'll say, well, you know, the Lord's not going to ever let anything like that happen wrong. He, that's why he gave us prophecy. He told us the end chapter of the life of, of earth. He told us that. And this is the closing of this deal because, past all, well, people are more wicked than you think. They're more wicked than you think. I, 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 I'll give this to you because I strongly believe in this. Um, a time is approaching very close. It's, it's just real close. Before the outbreak starts, the cities of the world are soon going to make their positions known where their hearts are, right? Not leaders speaking on their behalf. No, people are going to demand what they actually want in their hearts. And past Paul, when they make this decision, the cities are going to crumble right, right after that. You just watch and see. People yeah. will make that open demand. And when people begin to agree to iniquity in unison like that, they're going to get exactly what they want plus some. Oh, you know, when you talk about the cities and the countries rebelling, just in this last week, I was just noticing that Brazil had massive protests against their government. Uh, Russia has never really stopped since the war got started. It's getting worse. Iran, they're still in the streets and they're, they're protesting against the, uh, the uh, abuse on their civilians by that regime. Uh, we see the same thing rioting up, up, up riots constantly taking place in different parts of Europe. Uh, China, they're tired of being the mandated. They're very upset with that. I mean, so all these things seem to be intensifying and that's not even over really um, these events that's going to come up on the earth as much. It's more about just being squeezed and, the, and corruption and that kind of thing. You're saying that the events that's coming up on the earth is going to cause people to turn on their governments and say, "Forget you. We got to do it. We got to fix our. We got to save ourselves." Is that kind of what you see happening? Well, they're going to right now. People. People are rebelling against the governments right now. They're openly displaying that they don't like the way government is running things, right? But here's the problem. They can rebel against government all day. The issue is who's going to step up and run things, right? See, they keep going through this routine <laughs> where they don't like government. They say, you're not doing it right. Get out right. of here. But they themselves cannot take another step to do it at all because is, for some reason, a lot of Christians believe that they can't make a difference. That, that's from Satan himself. That's not true. One Christian can make a difference. They can make a global difference. Now, we're not talking about saving the earth. We're talking about the salvation of souls. Right. Because if people have not, if they haven't taken close inventory, uh, you know, Pastor Paul, just last night, I was tied up. Uh, it was around 4 a.m. or something like that. I was tied up helping to find a little girl. A little girl. Now, this happens. So I'm looking through some of the... Uh, dockets and everything this is happening at least in america at least 23 times a day at least and we're talking about kids under the age of 10 females so, every okay, single day so you were invo you were involved uh with the trying to locate a, a small child a little girl um and of course having access to technology and information you, you, that's part of your job description is one of the things you get involved in a lot of different things, but I mean, that's one of the things you do. Uh, do you work with, were you, were you connected somehow with local, uh, 
sheriff departments and police departments. That often happens from time to time. That will happen. Are you uh, using for extra are you, and with assets that, and resources? So from the resources you have available to you, are you you're able to participate in some way in trying to identify or to locate individuals? Can you do that? Yeah, normally I do that. Uh, that that happens professionally sometimes on a very large scale, but. But even in my personal life, I do that personally, too, because I'll, I'll take calls off the clock in person to do whatever I can do locally and, and abroad, any place I'm at to assist because it's getting bad. I mean, it's, people ha- are really losing their minds and there are too many children committing suicide. Yeah. That's clearly that's clearly a spirit, an operation. And and so these things, even right now, I, I, I can almost guarantee that people don't understand the time they're living in right now, not to a full degree. Here it is. We had troubles, and then all of a sudden we have somewhat of, of peace and security, both in our in people's wallets. The products are going away, true, but people have money, and they don't know what to do with it. You know what, Paul? right now is a time when people need to, they, they need to really be sober, not yeah. waste a dime. They can't waste a dime. I believe that God has given this time right before some things actually take place for people to prepare. Yet they can buy anything they want to buy, but that's beautiful. Right. If the shelves were full, people would waste their money. <laughs> and so because it's limited, it's almost like the Lord saying, hey, you might want to sober up, right, and utilize your time wisely, prepare, yeah. because this next cycle that's coming up is going to be arduous. And, and you know, it's going to be not so good. Yeah. Be sober-minded, folks. I mean, be be serious, be smart, be intelligent about what you do, and and get clear-minded, right? Get get focused. You know, I know, Mike, that you've done some great work out there. I mean, um, and it's it's amazing. And thank you for doing it. Uh, I know you've helped me a couple of different times when I've had some threats against me that you've I, I just brought it up to you. And I said, look, I got a problem. And the next thing you know, you said, don't worry, you won't hear from that person again. And I and I haven't. They're gone. I appreciate that. I understand that uh, people don't understand that uh, we're living in a world where there's violence and there's danger and there's hatred toward the gospel and toward Christians. And I think that, and toward children and the innocent. And so we're living in a wicked, very wicked world. Do, do you anticipate the violence, the lawlessness What's going on, Mike? Why are we having this lawlessness in our cities right now? Why are they Why are they turning loose uh, known killers and violent individuals? What can you tell me why that is being done? Well, Pastor, it's going hand in hand with the changes we see geologically, right? All this violence and iniquity is rising, but so it, so are the conditions of the earth. So is the activities in the heavens. This is it's almost like it's locked one on one. I believe it is. And I believe it's increasing beyond what we can ever uh, project ourselves. And you have a lot of folks around who are just, they're, they're, Pastor, they're giving up. They're giving up. They're starting to give in to alternative ideas. And it kind of goes like this. If a, if a person prays for something from the Lord and their situation does not change on their timing, in their timeline, right? They'll start saying, well, I tried I tried to pray. I tried to have faith. Well, if you're saying you tried to have faith, you just gave up. That means you gave up. That means you're not, you don't like the way God is raising you. But if people look close in their lives, there's some things that we, all of us know there's something we have to overcome in this life. And only we know it. But if we don't, we can overcome everything else. If we don't overcome that one thing, we're going to be doomed. And we already know that. We keep sidestepping it. And so, it's almost like the Lord is having us get our lives truly squared away, right? Yep. To, yep. to, to not overlook anything because the times are not deceitful at all. They're not even sneaky. We see a buildup, the trending of a buildup of absolute destruction of, of, of chaos beyond what we know, right? Right. And a Christian, if a person is a believer in Christ, they should understand that everything that's happening it's going to wake up the Christian community. It's going to stop the Christian community from playing games. But for those who are lost in the world, it's going to force their decision. Because no one will die until they make that absolute decision. They're either going to choose Christ or choose to be against Christ. And no one's going to go away until that happens. So everybody has that point of sobriety where they truly understand that. Well, this has been happening more and more, and believe it or not, there are some who have been inside the church that are unzipping and 
they have been wolves and they don't care to say they've been wolves. Yeah. Right. That's right. There, but then you have these Christians who hear them. You have a lot of depressed Christians. And because they're not getting their way, they're saying, well, God doesn't love me. And you know, that's a prophecy. When, when God said the, the, the heaviness begins when his own children will think that he has abandoned them. Yeah. He said and his own Jesus, children say that. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake That's you. That's right. I'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. So let me ask you a question, Mike, also. We're talking about these waves of energy, talking about this climate chaos and the things that's coming, a lot of chaos from a lot of different directions. In Isaiah 24, you know, and we did a we did a uh, DVD on this uh, three or four years ago called Isaiah Isaiah's Apocalypse, but it talks about a pole shift, or this sure sounds like one. Let me read this verse. In Isaiah 24, 1, it says, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Mike, and then it goes on, it talks about the land will be utterly emptied, utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. Is that all part of these, uh, of this incoming uh, binary system i mean is it going to literally i believe it is i believe it is Um, what does that mean turn it upside down well two things from that because you know uh i bet you heidi would know sometimes that word upside down turn upside down means to to to, uh what does that mean to toss it into a tight chaos right to toss it into a place with no order which means it'll be totally out of control totally out of control yeah um but also, Pastor Paul, it, it gives us a literal idea that the Earth is not going to be in its normal orbit. In order for the stars to move at all, the Earth is the one that's actually moving. If we perceive that the heavens, all the heavens, are just dancing around in the wrong places in this, that, and the other, that means the Earth is being jostled badly, right? Yeah. The Earth has not always been in the orbit it's in. It's not. And so we're about to go through a, yet another cycle that happens to this Earth in this solar system. We're about to have it again where the Earth will be moved into a different orbit. Now, it's always painful at the beginning because it takes uh, many, 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 many hundreds, of, if not thousands of years for the Earth to settle its orbit. But the Earth is going to lose its stability. And when this happens, all bets are off because there will be no prediction of the four seasons. We could have winter one hour or, or one half of the day and absolute summer the other half of the what? day. What? Because we position uh, the way we live our lives. We're so used to the Earth being in this constant motion. And never considering that at some point that motion is going to be highly disturbed. The North Pole could be Texas. We don't know. So things will certainly change. It's not going to be favorable. I was looking at some of the magnetic anomalies from far back. And do you not know that the North Pole has not always been the North Pole? It has not been. And when you go back in ancient times and you're talking about people, uh, the lands like Israel and Egypt, they had very different weather because they weren't in those parts of the earth the way the earth is positioned. You would have to tilt the globe, literally tilt the globe, to see where Egypt and Israel was. And Israel was right in a paradise zone. It was north of, you could say Israel would be where, uh, where Maine is. Israel would be where Maine is, not south, but north. It would be where Maine is. And, but the rest of the countries like, uh, Africa would have been where the North Pole is. Africa would. So when you have the tilt of the earth changing positions like this, and they find this out through mag, in, in the strata, you have these, uh, magnetic laden rocks. They study what the poles of those rocks are. And like, just like clockwork, they switch every so often. Every so often they switch. They also do this with alignment, the sun's effect, uh, radiation decay, all these things to see exactly who received the most intense uh, sunlight and who didn't. That way they can tell where the equator was, right? They do this through computer modeling and a lot of data, and it's it's it's, it's very clear things were not like this a long time ago. And we're about to go through this again, again. So those statements like when it says that the uh, sun would rise three times in one day, that's going to come to pass. And, you know, that's going to be wicked. Out in the world, when the sun rise and set three times in one day, it'll happen. When in the middle of the night, the, sh- the sun will shine forth. That will truly happen because we're not going to be in this stable orbit. And then you have uh, that, that one scripture I really like when it says the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Shall be shaken. And it, it, now, 
if they're not shaken all this time, they have not been shaken. That points almost to things have been stable. But if the powers of heaven, but what are the powers of heaven? Wouldn't they be the assigned principles that right. govern the physics of the earth? Right. So if those assigned principles that govern the physics of the earth and our celestial mechanics, if that is shaken, if that is no longer constant, then, uh, you know, that's when all bets are off. That's when our orbit shifts and everything else starts shifting. That's when the real damage comes and the pain comes. That's when the hot breath of the destroyer, those stories, start to take life. That's when the true iconography left in Mexico will no longer be interpreted as somebody in some skirt, but they'll understand their plasma conduits as is being experienced in several different locations. That's when those pools of mercury under most pyramids will begin to activate yet again. What? So there are a lot of things that are going to begin to happen here. Mike, in Isaiah 24, <clears throat> it also says this in verse 10. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened and the mirth of the land is gone. And in the city is left desolation and the gate is smitten with destruction. So are we talking about a period of time when these events that are going to reshape, as you say, our world our spinning of our planet for the sun to for the sun to rise and set three times in, in 24 hours would mean we've totally been repositioned in our yeah, orbit with yeah. the sun, which is going to really affect the whole rhythm of the whole world, right? I mean, yeah. is it also affect the gravitational pull and and the, will the tides rise and I mean, will we see just this insane cycle of of of, of life here? Instead of an ice age, I believe we're going to have a boil off of the water. I don't think we're going to have any water. I know that we are soon to have a water event, which will set most places underneath the water. Right? Let's talk about just that. So, a water event that's going to put most places underwater. Mm -hmm. Is that, okay, uh, is that from a uh, coastal flooding? Is this from a volcano? Is this from an earthquake? Is this from a deep impact meteor? What? <laughs> I think this is going to be caused by two events. Number one, as we have closer and closer proximity to a large gravitational anomaly out there in space, right? The Earth is going to, uh, in its realignment processes, we already have a double wobble, already. And that yeah. double wobble is increasing. It's increasing. In every double wobble, there comes a point of where it stutters, right? In physics, uh, that stutter happens about three to four times during the either the um, uh, up spinning or down spinning of any object it will have these we call it a jitter it'll jitter self-correct and continue to spin slowing down and speeding up right the earth is going to do the same thing so as forces alter how it spins in in our proximity to the sun and the sun's forces upon us are going to be challenged because the introduction of a brand new Gravitational force will diminish the gravitational force of the sun. That's something else a lot of people okay. don't uh, really think of. Okay. Now, keep in mind the second sun, nobody may ever see the second sun. They may never see it. But that's not going to stop the effects we're about to have from it, right? Because we will have that photonic exchange, meaning our sun is going to go black. During its, during its closest uh, uh, proximity to mm -hmm. our sun, all the photons are going to be redirected. People will see it. It'll look like a bridge in the sky. The sun will be darkened. Like. The sun will we be darkened. We won't see it. That's right. It'll be black. No light's going to hit us. The photons are going to be redirected towards the alternate star. So, they have observed this hundreds of times happening in real time Whoa. out in space. In fact, the rule is most planets have a second sun. We're, we're very. It's very rare for a system to just have one star. So, they so, have found... So, so the binary system that's coming is really the second sun, and it's getting into a point where at some point it's bigger than our sun, I take it. It's much bigger. And well, it's of a, it's of a different nature. I wouldn't okay. necessarily say it's Maybe bigger. Maybe not as bigger, but, but a different nature. Okay. And at some point, though, as it, gets, as it comes into our solar system, it gets close enough that it, woof, it sucks the protons out of the, our sun. Woof, and then is it like a... Whoosh, protons, protons, some whoosh. of the external chemistry and everything else. So 
with that redirection of light, because those are going to be the invisible uh, uh, photons and the visible photons are going to be redirected. That only leaves infrared. Infrared will always emit in a bunch of different directions. That means at the same moment the, this, these photons are redirected, everything on the face of the Earth is going to appear red. In fact, just about everything in the sky will appear red during that time. So the sun will be darkened, just like it says in Job, and the moon will turn to blood. And and before the great and terrible day of the Lord shall come. We're told this is going to happen in the book of Joel. And even Jesus says we're going to see these great signs in the heaven. So when you say that the sun will be darkened like this proton exchange multiple times like in a day, would we see this? I mean, this would be the most crazy. You understand what? It, it, do you understand the whole be, world uh, will be stunned out of their mind? People will just well, fall of course dead they will. from that. From, of course they will. From, of I mean, course they will. People will have heart attack. See, in this, this of course earth, they will. They'll take the world's. This is it's over, and they'll just fall over dead in fear, right? Right, because they won't understand. Well, there no one's explaining that to them That's now. They right. don't even know how long how long that apex uh, period of time lasts, right? That'd be about that'd be at least a twelve to thirteen to fourteen day period of <laughs> darkness and 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 just red all over the place. But but they have also observed that this moment between that close proximity of stars will only last for about. Five to six minutes in some cases. So the world we won't, don't, we don't, it won't we freeze don't. to death in five or six minutes. No, we're going to burn. It's going to get hot because we'll have nothing blocking infrared during oh, that time. Oh, it's the infrared. I forgot the infrared. If photons, if yeah. photons are redirected, right? That's yep. when our part of our atmosphere is also going to be redirected. Not mm-hmm. only is it going to suck property or, or um, have a chemical exchange with the sun, a particle exchange with the sun, but all the planets. In close proximity to that second system, it's going to have interactions with. So it will throw things off. Yeah. It's going to throw things off. That means, because they've already observed in certain systems, look, because they have to do this in hindsight when they comb over the data. In some large systems, that moment was only about seven to eight minutes. In some other systems, it was, it was 40, 50 days. Uh, one star system, it took a year for this to happen. We can actually go through this moment for, I, I know one thing, the Earth will see at least 10 days of it. That means like 10, 10 days, days of, of burning. Darkness. You're calling that the 10 days of darkness almost. Uh, 10 days of burning because of everything burning. will be red. And if any of those infrared rays touch you, it's going to fry you like a microwave would, uh, uh, you know, food in the microwave. So mm-hmm. you, in, in that moment, no one will be able to allow that red color to touch their skin lest they be fried. So the only way to avoid that is to put some type of reflective material um, or some absorbing material on the outside of a house. You couldn't let any kind of light into your window because if you did, it's going to burn up everything inside. And that's how infrared heat works, by the way. It, when that infrared heat, you can touch infrared heat. It will not do anything to your hand. But if you keep your hand in proximity to that infrared heat, it's going to instantly start heating up everything uh, that that infrared touches, that that light spectrum touches so will they prepare people in any way for this event or will it be too much other chaos? how can they There's how no can way. they yeah uh, plus people are not listening they, no. people are doing exactly what they want them to do past Paul. they wanted people in a position where people would not listen to reason but they would be given over to fantasy and so all you have to do now is start some fantasy on social media people will ignore any type of sound uh, scenario and they will opt for the fantastic scenario. And so they, you know, with all these people on social media, you better believe that you have people out there driving the conversation and people are doing precisely what they want them to do. Let's look in the Bible. Now you've brought another point. And if you go to Revelation chapter six, it talks about the breaking of the sixth seal. And it says these words in verse 12. This is Revelation six twelve. It says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast as her untimely figs when she's shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, 
And they said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? Yep, it's not a, it, the day of the Lord is not a good time. And he said there's no mercy in it. There's no mercy left. There's no mercy. So it you is don't cruel. want to be here, folks, when this happens. You don't want to be here when this happens. Not, not when the wrath of God. And we won't be, will we, Mike? I mean, the Christians. No, we're not, a, we're not appointed to the wrath. No, we're not appointed to the wrath. And there's a difference past- between the, the wrath of God, folks, and the tribulation period. We, Absolutely. People get that so confused. They think it's the same, and they're not. Tribulation but you know what? Is, you know, tribulation is what man does to one another, and events do happen on the earth at the same time. But the well, wrath of God is, 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 is something that you don't want to be here when, when God pours out that wrath. Yeah, well, none of his children will endure his wrath. That's and that's right. what Christ is for. Pastor Paul, but there's one thing I never understood. Okay. I just never understood it. Christ is our Savior. He's our Lord. Right. Yeah. He is the only one worthy to open the seals yes, in the is. first place. Yeah. Why would I, being a child of the living God, ever fear what the Lord would do with the seals? He if he if he's our savior and Lord, why would we fear what he is doing to the <laughs> inhabitants of the earth? Because they won't listen. I think that things sometimes get off the rails. Right. Because and often in these in these TV shows and books, they have gone to the where well, they got to the point a long time ago where they just you know they were just thinking up harmless scenarios it seemed at the time but people have taken that literally and then they find themselves in fear yep. of what Jesus will unleash because revelation does not happen until Jesus opens the seals Jesus is our savior right yes. so I I told somebody just the other day there's no need for me to escape what the savior does no. because he's the only one that died for me. He's not going to do anything against me. Everything he does is going to be for the salvation of my soul. And I will accept any. If if the Lord wanted me here during a time of trial, I've learned, I've learned over time. I don't want, I don't want my life to be peaceful and non-resistant because the Lord said Satan will resist the word. So if I don't have the word in me, I'm not going to be resisted by Satan. And if my life is so free, so trouble free, there's something wrong with me. I need to go back and pray, do something, because Satan will assault the word of God as wherever he sees Amen. he can't overcome it, but he will assault it. That is, These that in, is, well, that is such a great point, and that's what we've been trying our best to get across, I think, Mike, and that is Christians, we do get persecuted and we do get assaulted. Them that live godly shall suffer persecution. We shouldn't be shocked by that. But that's that's what man does. That's what evil from Satan and darkness does. But what Christ does for us is is all good. And he will not we're not going to suffer from his breaking of the seals on him up on the earth because that isn't for us. That's right. Now, until that's right. then, we have to put up with the confrontation. With the, that's right. You know, Mike, you know, and, and, and if we're not having a confrontation, then we need to check our life and say, why isn't the devil fighting against me? That's uh, right. Okay? That's right. Because if you are serving the Lord and God is is on your side, the devil is not on your side. And, and you've got an enemy. And the Bible says he's like a roaring lion. He's seeking who he can devour. He's coming at you with both barrels. But then again, Jesus said this, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Isaiah said, and every tongue that rises against you, you shall condemn in judgment for this is the heritage of the Lord. So Mike, you're right. We got the, we got the goods on the devil. If we'll just, he's got no, he's got no power. He's got no no power power over us. us. And I noticed, Pastor Paul, somebody said, well, Mike, if you go back in time, would you change anything? No, No. I want every traumatic event I ever had because every time some trauma happens in my life and it's been pretty rough, Pastor Paul, guess what it does? It keeps me from taking the side of Satan. If we had no resistance, we would say, oh, no, I'm going to go out in the world and do this. There's nothing wrong with it. See, nothing happens. We have that ideology. If we don't have any breakdown or pain or anything else, for some reason we adopt it thinking it's okay. Well, I got news for everybody. Satan cannot do whatever he wants to do to anybody 
who is nope. who is washed by the blood of the lamb. And what he does do, he does under God's control so that that person will never go across the wrong fence back into iniquity and be lost forever. Amen. Satan has absolutely no control over anybody who belongs to Christ. Jesus summed it up. I give you power to tread upon scorpions and serpents, and I give you all power over the enemy. That's Not right. some power, all power. All so power. You, you can't do anything. So there's no there's no place for fear when whenever we're talking about the end times or anything like that. That's right. If you're a Christian, now if you're not, if you're not washed by the blood of the Lamb, you have every right to soil your britches yeah. because it's going to be a rough ride. Yeah. But those and who are washed why. by the blood of the Lamb, no, they they have no the fear shouldn't even be a part of their of their thought process. Amen. And that's why we have this broadcast, folks. And people will say, well, why in the world the doom and gloom? There's no doom and gloom here. Now, if you're not saved and you're living in sin and you're walking in darkness and you come across this broadcast, you'll say, wow, the world is going to fall apart. It's going it, to. Yeah, you're right. But in Christ, you'll have peace. That's what Mike is trying to say. We have to tell you these things are coming. So that we can warn you. The Bible said we're like watchmen. We're set on a wall. We see a sword coming or we see destruction coming. If we fail to warn you, our your blood will be on my hands and on yours, Mike. It'll be on us. That's right. But it. You, but, you only, you know, when you only, you, you don't want to, per, you, when you find yourself in a position where you will not warn a person, it's because you don't love them. When oh. you love a person, you warn them. Yeah. Because you don't want to see their souls consumed. And, and plus, people praying for this. What did they say, Pastor? Well, they said, Lord, do something to wake up Uncle Johnny, to wake up on whoever. And guess what? These events that are coming are going to wake up Uncle Johnny. And not they whoever, are. because when they see it, they're going to say, Oop, I have no time to play around. Where's my nephew? Where's my niece? Where's my sister? And this, it was talking crazy about the Lord. That's that. They, they named this. Let me go back to them and get my life right with Christ. Amen. That's a wake up call for the world. If they don't get these wake up calls, they will have no salvation. So do you think, Mike, what we're doing tonight is a wake up call? Are we bringing the are we ringing the bell every Thursday night? Is that what we're doing? I hope so. <laughs> hope we can ring it loud and louder every single time. <laughs> We're ringing it, folks. Mike from around the world is with us tonight. We're ringing the bell, and so we're 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 sh- we're shouting from the top of the mountain that Christ is coming, and that th- things are going to get worse. They're not going to get better. Things are going to get more intense. Mike, let's talk a little bit about, about the intensity. Uh, people are wondering. Okay, so you know we've talked about the the white trains, the empty shelves. You. When you told us that spam, they're going to be they're going to be pushing spam on us, I about died. I said to myself, that's really weird. But you know, here we are. I see spam commercials everywhere now. Spam this, and you can fry spam, you can slice it, you can cut it and dice it, and you can mix it with this and that. And now the empty shelves came, the pandemic came, and now you're telling us 2023, these 17 dates are set. There's even going to be a big water event. Mike, is that water event? Is it going to happen in the first half of this year, 2023, or do we know? First of all, based on geological activity, uh, that will give us a sharper time of when that actually takes place. What, what that will essentially be caused by is a absolute destabilization of, of a few of the plates in the earth. Right. It only takes a small trigger now. It does not take a big one like in days bold. Right. We have some monsters underneath the ocean that have finally woken up. If they start to erupt. Right. One thing people will see is this. And I, I said before, I say it one more time that they will see a large column of ash going straight up into the atmosphere from the ocean. Right? Yeah. Which we saw at Tonga. We saw that at Tonga all the way. To They're space. about to see. Uh, they're about to see some more. Okay. Right now, when this takes place, though, the, these the, there are a few in a, in areas that will cause some pretty big earthquakes. And when I say pretty big, I mean an earthquake around uh, possibly a 7.9 and 8.6, right? Okay. That will have an extended shaking to it. When this takes, when when that happens, uh, there's no way for the plates to self-correct except for to shake loose a few more things. That earthquake will trigger almost a chain of events, dislodging water from its basins in many different places. And then in that moment, forget about a tsunami because the water will just begin to rise, right? It'll begin to rise. Right now, we have a, we have a bad issue. The Antarctic plate is eight away further than what they thought it was underneath the bottom. 
right? Of the wow. ice sheet. The ice sheet is. And, and so it's almost like a, it's almost like if you take a, a 3,000 square foot house, right? And you hold up a continent. That's what it looks like. That's what's happening. The heat, the underneath that ice, the ground, the, the, the bottom of the ocean down there, underneath there, is heating up past all. It's melting from the bottom up, not from the top down. So it's only a matter of time before that breaks off. And when it breaks off, it will set off a tsunami. We are talking about the, the entire western side. If you were to look at a map in Africa was dead center, the western side of the world, the entirety, is going to be hit by a tsunami. That's from that, side. from That's the breaking of that Antarctic plate, right? But this, because it's so huge, it's going to go around the entire Earth. There won't be one place on Earth that will not be affected. Everybody's going to be affected by water. Now, just to clarify something, Pastor Paul, God said he would not destroy the Earth by water again, life right. on Earth again. Right. We're not talking about the destruction of all life on Earth. We're talking about the flooding of all lands on the Earth, right? So that no one will have a non-moist portion of ground to put their foot in, right? So water is going to be dislodged that way. As, as th this Antarctic plate issue is, is really, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not okay, good. It's just it's not good. And that's because the magma that's rising is eating away at the bottom of the Antarctic uh, uh, ice it's heating it up. It's heating it up from the bottom up, and right. it's melting large. You're talking about, it, it's, it almost looks like an entire continent held up by a small tiny house. Is that and how long before that tiny house crumbles? Is that why all these world leaders kept flying down there and people to see something? Are they showing them this or is there some other reason? Well, they know about that, okay. but they also know about some other things, right? And I'll say this, and the North Pole is not what people think it is, right? All, all these people who think that uh, somehow the Earth coalesced from fire and this, that, and the other, they're going to be sorely mistaken in the end because that's just not the deal. When God said he made things, people should have left that alone and stopped theorizing over how he made it, how, how this, uh, it, it's, you know, the earth is a perfect, a perfect place to sustain life in a very dead, you know, universe or, or universe that can't sustain life like it is for us. I'm very thankful, you know, that the Lord sustains all of this, just like I'm thankful for the nation I occupy. But when people have tried to explain how things evolved, they took creation out. They shouldn't have done that. They should have no. left it alone because the truth is they did not know. And, and by the way, evolution is a theory. It's not a fact. It's not a fact. It's a theory. So sometimes in science, they have all these theories people accept as facts. They're still theories and educated guess. But the North Pole is very different. When they took a look at the North Pole past ball, of course, it deals with ancient stuff. Okay. It is cold up there, right? But it's also thawing, right? And if, if, if a little bit of the stories are true, as some people may be aware, then that meeting in the north was very important. The meeting in the Antarctic was very important because they were going to both locations, both, not just one. They weren't going to one location. They were going to both. So they, they were going just, to the Arctic? And to the oh Antarctic. yeah, they were they were going to both locations, okay. both locations. Okay. Right, and it's very difficult to get. It's it's extremely difficult to get to these places in the first place. Right. That that's a that's a very um, dangerous ride. Let's put it that way. Okay. Right? It's a very dangerous ride, but nevertheless they went uh, because they were seeing things. Just like all world leaders went to Egypt. For what reason? All world leaders yes, went to Mexico. Did. For yes, what reason? All world leaders went to South America, specifically Peru. For what reason? They all right. did this. They all left a trail of where they have gone all throughout the earth. And they know, they absolutely believe, and they absolutely will not tell the public. Because the public, well, they don't quite have sobriety. When they learn about things, they're going to blame somebody. Right? The, the public is the army of these hidden individuals that are in government. The public is their army. And they will sway the public to do the bidding to keep people out of office, to keep people in office, to change prices of this, that, and the other, to alter the way economy works and everything else. They use the public as, in, as a private army. What is your thought? And, and it, okay, and we talk about that, using the public as a private army. Is a guy like Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum, they talk about the Great Reset. Is that what he's trying to do? Is he trying to 
reposition the populace into thinking a different way economically? He already did. He already did. It's already done. That that's the here's the thing that now I have to admit it frustrates me a little bit. Not at anybody who lives like that. It frustrates me because if you knew a truth, Pastor Paul, yeah, and you saw your brother or your sister believing uh, what you know for a fact is something somebody dreamt up, something uh, uh, them being a part of something somebody's trying to plan. But you cannot outright just tell the person, you know, what you're doing is just false. You can't say that because people grew up with these, you know, ways and these um, uh, issues in their lives to the point where they believe only they are real and that other things are just fantasy and theory and speculation. You can't just outright tell a person. So the only thing I can do is go find a scripture that matches something similar to the conditions and tell a person, look, trust in the Lord always. Don't trust in what you're doing. This money situation, Pastor Paul, people are doing exactly what they want them to do. They have guided the public in a certain direction financially. Now, you have honest people who may not know the whole story, right? And those honest people, naturally, they're going to come up with their, their best guess as far as what's happening. But... Money is their control system. Money is. Money is not something that um, God dropped on the earth and, and told people to take care of. That's man-made stuff. That is the works of men's hands. And they do classify, categorize, and control the populace through it, which is why they'll never speak about its origin too much. They don't talk about the origin of money. They don't have a lot of documentaries on this because if people had that concept in their heads, they would say, wait a minute. We're maneuvering our lives over money, and money is man-made. Are we kidding? We need to go back and pray and ask the Lord to intervene. That's all we need to do. But man has their whole dependency upon money. Have you noticed? It, it, it's something we need, yes. It's a tool that's essential, yes. Yeah. The problem is is that every time people they, they advocate certain issues that were in the headlines possibly, they're actually supporting somebody else's nefarious plans. Actually, and wow. so in that respect, it's good to turn to the Lord in those issues because if, if a person does not know personally what's happening, they, they it's it's um, they got to be careful of what they support. Mike, I know they we're really almost do. out of time, and you're to, to this point. There's one last question I want to bring up. There's a man. We're gonna put him on. We're gonna put him on the screen here. We're gonna show you. Uh, I can't pronounce his name. It's uh, um, he's Putin's chef. Okay. We got a picture. Oh no! Of him. Okay. Oh no! Okay, okay. He's 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 my age. He's 61 years old, and it says here he's known as Putin's chef because his restaurants are catering businesses, hosted dinners for Putin. But this guy controls a network of companies, including what's called the Wagner Group, a Russian state-backed mercenary group accused of war crimes in Africa, Syria, Ukraine, and three companies accused of interference in the 2016-2018 U.S. elections. But also. Uh, it, it, a video has circulated in September that showed that this guy is uh, that in uh, a prison recruiting inmates, promising them freedom if they serve six months with the Wagner Group, if they spend nine years, even though he was nine years in a convicted prison in Soviet Union, blah, 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 blah. And he was involved in the Russian forces of the war in Donbass back in May of 2014, that initial thing. I guess my question is, Mike, do you know anything about Putin's chef and this guy and who he is and how dangerous or is he as dangerous as some may say? Yeah, he's dangerous. He's dangerous because he's he's very good at manipulation. That's his superpower, I guess you could say. He's very good at manipulation. Is he a right so, hand? Is he an aide to Putin? Is he like a – Well, he's not, it's not that he's trusted that way, right? Okay. It's that they know what he's hungry for. This, this guy has a hunger, right? And – He's, he's very manipulative, and he does not give up. He will not give up. He just He's not going to throw in the towel. This guy uses every resource available to accomplish things. Even when he was jailed, he was doing things in jail that nobody can do if they're out of jail. <laughs> Even if they had billions of that, they still couldn't do it. This guy was he, he was like this uh, mafia leader okay. right? that nobody could ever find out how he did what he did. If you think Al Capone was bad, this this guy just just makes Al Capone look like I don't know uh, uh, one of the Muppets or something. Um, this guy's this guy's highly manipulative, and it, in, in that respect, it makes him a very scary guy too. 
Is Very he scary. somebody that? So, may, I mean, there's 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 a uh, there's a conversation now starting called Life After Putin. Now Heidi has seen two different uh, the, the, the war after Putin, or Life After Putin. Okay, and there's been two different uh, reports, and these are coming out of the Mensa world. Okay, that are that are they're already there's meetings being held on the world after Putin. Is there is there any is, can you help me understand is there any chatter on this that you're hearing uh, anything? Yeah, about? it is. Pressure. You got people positioning themselves to do this, and, and, and this is going to sound funny, but if the meeting between the Vatican and Putin goes well, all that will not be. It's all going to be based on Putin's acceptance of what the Vatican brings forward. Wow. Okay, and you know this this meeting, the United Nations. This past week, voted 154 to nine to hold a peace summit in Moscow yep. early this 2023. They have to. They and, have to. And it, but in, in at this peace summit, it's not a peace summit to end the. They're, they're not a, a, a announcing it's to end the war between Russia and Ukraine, but to fix the Israel-Palestinian conflict. Yeah. And I well, basically. That, the Vatican has been to. invited. I, I, is the Pope of Rome going to come to this? He would have to because he's the only one authorized to do what he must with uh, with Putin. It's the only way it can happen. It can't happen with a proxy or anybody else. It has to be person to person. And based on that decision, uh, we're going to see a, almost an immediate crumbling of conditions in the earth. Or it may extend a period of time that will allow people to reflect and, and partly recover uh, from certain damages. But based upon the decision that comes out of this meeting, things in everybody's lives are going to change. So the Vatican is, and the, and the Putin is going to deter, the, the Vatican is going to determine the fate of Putin and the world, maybe. Yeah, that, that whatever decision comes out of that with Putin, and specifically the Vatican and Putin, whatever decision comes out of that is either going to be compliance or to be against said proposals, but whatever the deal is, uh, almost instantly we're going to see a crumbling of things. Or, or there would be a small time of reprieve. But that small time of reprieve is very small. I mean, momentary. Uh, anytime we have a moment where it looks like we're going to have peace, that's a good time for all people uh, to, to kind of get away from everything and truly prepare their families and their own lives. Because we're not going to escape what's headed in our direction uh, there's going to be no change in, in, in trajectories of certain objects. Uh, we're not going to miss the meteor storm we're headed into. That's coming regardless. And um, these things have been set in motion. And so any time of peace that we would have, that would be a good time for a person to slow down and reflect, to really reflect and begin to pray and ask the Lord to give them clarity and guidance and what they must do next. Because we're, for our time is coming Regardless if a person's ready or not, a time all of us have had the warning for years. Not one of us can ever say God did not warn us because, yes, he did warn us. And that's, that's very unfortunate because the Lord did exactly what he said he would do, that he would yell it out from every single piece of life form he could of, of his intentions. But by faith, we believe it or not. That means he'll never prove it to us. By faith, we must receive it. And if we have to receive it by faith, then it's not going to be yelled in a way that, you know, they yell out politics. It's going to be presented to everybody. And by way of that uh, Holy Spirit confirmation, internally one must confirm it or not. And he has given us ample time. The problem is we want proof behind everything so that we don't waste our time missing entertainment in the world. I'll tell you, I'll tell everybody to prepare for the times ahead. It would have taken a person at least 15 years about 15 years to prepare mentally for what's coming ahead. Every moment that we get, uh, we, sh- we should really think and consider seriously our role here on this earth for the sake of the kingdom of God. Because the Lord has filled some people with a message. And the Lord filled you with a message, Pastor Paul. And, and God surely preserved you for this time. And some other folks for this time. And that message is not going away. But yeah. we're, we're about to enter into the time where we actually see 
of people pay the ultimate price. We've not seen that before. And yeah. that time is, it, it'll, COVID-19 is nothing. Like, whatever people think about COVID-19, that is nothing. When people begin to see uh, hundreds of thousands of people fall in one day, that's going to make a difference. That's going to hurt. It's going to sting. It's going to cause fear and sorrow. It's going to frighten people. And when it continues to happen like that, people are going to start to think, well, this isn't what I thought would happen at all, right? Yeah. So right now, you know, we, we, it will be a good time because we still have liberties and freedom. It'd be a good time to take those liberties, the freedom, uh, some of the resources that people have and do the godly thing with it. Not Amen. the wasteful thing, but the godly thing. Godly thing. Right? And be yeah. highly responsible over things like that because these moments that we have right now, even though they are in rough times, they're not gonna, they're not gonna happen like this, uh, too often. They yep. just won't. Nope. They won't. Mike, wow. Well, you got me thinking about this, uh, about several different things. I wrote a page down stuff. Uh, I'm going to be doing some research this next few days. I appreciate what you said. Think about what you need to do, folks. Do the godly thing while you still can. Mike, appreciate you coming on. I mean, wow, great broadcast tonight. Really, seriously, uh, great webinar. Let me just tell you right now, the feedback from the webinar has been phenomenal. People really appreciate your candidness and openness, and that map was incredible. And not only you, but all the guys that were in this was really, really super. So thank you again for being our guest tonight as well. Thank you so much. Well, God bless your pastor. I hope this, all of this helps. I hope it really helps someone out there. I think God tonight, bless your pastor. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Lord willing. All right. All right. God bless. God bless.